Hey, I'm Kyle from the Visual Studio Debugger team, and today I wanted to do a quick video talking about how you can use inline values to make your debugging experience feel even smoother. So let's jump right in with some examples, starting with return values. If you're like me, there's a good chance that at some point you found yourself doing something like this, creating a temporary variable right before you return so that while you're debugging, you can see what your method is about to return. And this works, but it's not really ideal to need to come in here and modify my code solely for debugging purposes, which is where inline return values come in. Here I have the same method with a breakpoint on my return line, and I'm going to step forward to our closing brace. At this point, now that the previous line has been executed, I can see right here in line what value this returned without needing the temporary variable. If I have it open, I can also see all of my inline values populated down in the locals window, but by showing it alongside the code, even if I don't have that pane open, I'm going to see my values right in line where it's most convenient. We can also do this anytime we call a method. Here I've got a different method that I don't have a breakpoint set in, and I'm just going to step forward and we can see our results show up here. And we can take it one step further. Maybe I'm not really sure how we ended up with this return value because it's not what I was expecting. All I need to do is hover and ask Copilot, and it'll give me an explanation of why get approximate color is returning that value without me needing to debug through the issue myself. But that's not the only thing we can do with inline values. We can also use them with conditionals. Here I have a super simple example where I want this block of code to run if any of these three methods return true. You'll notice that before I've even stepped forward to fire off these methods, I'm already getting an inline value saying true. For methods that don't have side effects, this is basically letting us see what this condition is going to resolve to ahead of time. But you're not always going to be calling methods that you can evaluate ahead of time. If we take a look at this example, we only want to run this block of code if all four of these methods return true. When the code executes, it's going to do a short circuit evaluation, meaning it's going to evaluate each one of these pieces one by one, and if any of them return false, it's not going to bother evaluating the others, because there's no point in seeing whether check 3 and check 4 return true if we already know that check 2 is false. But when you're running this code, you won't normally know which one of these methods return false. We could have short-circuited on check 1, check 2, check 3, or check 4. Now we have an inline value that can tell us. Whichever method we just evaluated, basically the one that determined that we should not enter this code block, We'll have its return value shown here so that we can immediately know that the reason we didn't run this code is because check2 returned false. Now let's look at another scenario, which is method parameter values. I'm going to set a breakpoint right at the beginning of get welcome method, and as you can see, it expects a string parameter. When I land in the method, we can see our parameters value showing up right next to the method definition, and this isn't a point in time value. It'll dynamically update if your parameter changes. So here my method is updating name to a default value since originally it was empty and we can see our parameter value change on screen immediately to reflect that as we're walking through this method. The last scenario that I wanted to take a look at is loops. Here we've got a for each loop that's iterating over a list of some fruits and just like in all the other examples, you'll be able to see in line which fruit we're looking at each time we start another pass through the loop. And the same thing applies with for loops where we're seeing our index update over each iteration of the loop right in line. That's a quick look into how you can make your debugging flow feel just a little bit easier using inline values. And for more debugging tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the VS channel so that you can see new videos as soon as they come out. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.